Hello painters and welcome to another Artist Opus What's on the Table blog, vlog, whatever we're calling it. We haven't picked a name yet because quite a lot of the suggestions, even if they were amazing we had in the previous episode, were overly focused on the Slaanesh theme. So the idea with this series is that, you know, even if I get a butterfly syndrome and hop over to vampire accounts or I see a cool town model or something like that, it needs to be able to be applied to everything that would fall under any, you know, any hobby that I could be doing, not specifically the Slaanesh stuff. Anyway, for now, it is still the Slaanesh, so where have I got up to with that? I hate Bliss Bob Archers. They are beautiful models. I have built two, and I don't want to build any more than eight of those ever in my life, and I'm pretty sure I don't want to paint one of them, never mind ten, so I feel like I need them in the army for how they work, and I do think that they are brilliant looking models, but they are hyper detailed and they look like someone that should be, you know, leading your D&D campaign or a warband or something like that. There's so much going on there. That is not my bag. And if I'm going to be picking anything to do efficiently, you know, or, or have multiples of in my army, that is about the level of detail that I want to go for. I'm being strictly practical here. I want to get this army on the table. I know what I'm like. And if I don't help myself out with that, it won't ever happen. So... One unit of those is going to be enough. I want some more shooting in the army, so I'll probably have to ally something in or put in a soul grinder or something that's got some long-ranged attacks. There isn't much shooting in the army, but it's a really good way to build up your summoning points of how the army works. So I will be getting some shooting in somehow, even if it would be better by Bliss Barb Archers. I don't want more than one unit of them, and I might not even end up with one unit of them. So what I'm going to do is swiftly change course, adapt, be practical, and consider my future enjoyment, because this hobby is meant to be about fun, not just about putting too many purchases in your hobby cupboard of shame, <laughs> which I've definitely done also. When your hobby cupboard of shame is separated by Grand Alliance, you really know that you've got a problem. Order, chaos, death, destruction. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> I think this would be a brilliant, perfect model to test a colour scheme on. I also have the Fiends. They are unenjoyable to assemble, but I think they'll be more simple to paint. They're not quite as hyper detailed as the Bliss Barb Archers, and they are a bit bigger as well. And one of the important things for me in this army is going to be the transition from demon flesh to more humanoid flesh, or how I'm going to balance that out, or how I'm going to change between my colours. And the colours I think I want, which has recently been backed up by seeing this amazing Bellacore. I didn't see this Bellacore and think I should do that. I had a scheme in mind. I saw this Bellacore and I was like, that's my scheme. That's exactly what I was thinking of. And that looks even better than I had thought. So the key themes I want to be hitting on for the colour scheme are purple, peach and orange. It ain't going to be subtle, let's face it. It's going to be properly attention grabby. I used to be a very, a very dark painter and I always uh, towards realism. I just like looking at bright armies. You know, when I see other people's bright armies now, it's, it's a nice, enjoyable experience. I have nothing against other types of armies. I love weathering. I love grime. I love, you know, depressing realism in all of its, all of its senses. I don't mean that as a criticism whatsoever. I want this army to be bright though. And if I want it to be considered for painting awards, which I do, I want it to be something that stands out and people cannot not look at. You know, if there is five armies displayed, on a tablecloth of any color or, you know, green gaming mats, which often make a lot of armies look really bad, hence the love of black base rooms, you know, you, you've got something within your control. I want this to stand out, you know, I want people to have to make an excuse to not be sending their attention in the direction of my army. So it's all about them looking at my army, which is what you have to do if you want to be considered more readily for awards, or at least I do not think it hurts. You know, if you're in a dimly lit gaming hall or room or people are really busy, brighter stuff grabs more attention as does things like, you know, hazard stripes or blood effects or, you know, whatever it is like that. Now, the lighting isn't great in here, but uh, it is a pretty striking looking army. So I went for a full, you know, turquoisey theme, a lot of very nicely painted things in there. And there's quite a lot of fancy freehand, as you can see on him with the wolf. And there's plenty of it. Uh, it kind of lowers in quality as I got less and less patient. Um, but yeah, there is a lot of turquoise stuff in there. Some really nice paint jobs, especially the early elf stuff. So uh, these guys kind of just stood out by being basically black, white or turquoise. There's no other colors largely introduced in the entire army. So picking a solid theme and leaning heavily into it is one of my ways to attract attention on the table, as I've said, and it's worked for me in the past. It has been a long while since we got any of those because the world has been closed. And I haven't been painting armies as nicely. So um, yeah, half of these are for gaming roughly. Um, all of the uh, the GW skulls at the back are for gaming. 
Um, but the other half are for painting. This is some of them. There's some more uh, spread around as well. I'm not particularly into gimmicks like lighting, although I have seen them demonstrated really well, you know, like liquid smoke machines, all of that stuff. Saw so some amazing things at Adepticon and Matt from Pro Painted Studios, who made my tokens that are so beautiful. He's also done some really funky armies in the past, you know, an entire ocean bay being represented in amazing stuff like that. I'm not going for that, so I want people to have to look at my army because it is bright as hell. I haven't decided basing yet, which is fine because these guys are still on square bases, so I'm just gonna put them on some temporary bases while I test it out. I'm gonna clean them up and I will pick between a, maybe I'll do both, but I'm gonna be doing at least one of either a demonette or a fiend. I think they're both awesome models and as they're from the summoning pool, which is where the demons are in the demon army in particular, I wanna have a good way to batch those out because there's something that isn't gonna be put on the table at the beginning of every game. Um, I need to have an efficient way to paint them. You know, it's gotta be worth my time making, maybe I'll need 60 demonettes to be painted for playing on the table and uh, they might never get used. So I don't wanna to spend too much time on those in particular. So uh, yeah, that's it. Let's clean up these models. They still literally need dusting off in the case of the old stuff and get some paint on them. Let me show you guys how bad this is. I'm not sure if that shows up nicely on camera, but this side has been brushed and this side hasn't. So I'm not actually going to do all of this at my hobby desk because I don't think putting this much dust in the air willingly in the area that I paint is a good idea. I'll just show you on this model though. So it is okay to use a brush on this. I wouldn't use a brand spanking new one. This one needs a bit of a clean afterwards anyway. So I'm going to I'm going to do that and that's all right. You can afterwards just do this a fair bit and that will help take sediment out. Um, if you're super worried, just use like an old shade brush or something like that. Something um, that's fairly fluffy. I prefer a degree of control and a slight stiffness because I really, you know, I'm going to take my time on these. I really do want to get into the nooks and crannies. I don't have to worry about the base because they're going to be ripped off that. But the actual models themselves, I do want to be completely cleaned and uh, shined up. All of that from within inside a cabinet, believe it or not. Should be able to get them up to a decent enough quality though. I was slightly concerned that there was so much on there, but I'm pretty sure I can get the vast majority of it off. More than likely, um, these guys will be in my summoning pool, so I'm not going to be quite so precious about them, uh, but I would like them to be up to a solid standard for sure. Um, still, as of yet, not decided whether I will be stripping them or not. And this is going to be our test model. The reason for this is, you know, it's got this nice big thigh section. It's got sections that I painted in two different manners in the past. And that's an idea that I want to continue with. And it's also got a rider and a mount. And I do need to work out the interplay between rider and mount here, because if I get it wrong, they'll look like being exactly the same thing, which I think think probably isn't a good idea. Anyway, this is what experimentation and test models are for, so let's crack on. Someone's been a bad boy and left their airbrush with crap in it, so I'm gonna clean this out and then we can rock on. I'm actually gonna use this to undercoat my stuff. I don't normally undercoat via airbrush, but you know, these have already got paint on them, so I don't have to worry about priming and I am also looking to not add too much texture to them further because I don't wanna obscure any details. And our suspect and varnish so should go without saying if you're ever using varnish make sure you clean it properly otherwise you'll end up with this horrible gelatinous blobby um like super super strong gel in your airbrush i'm nearly there i just need to clean out the nozzle and we'll be good to go really silly to not flush this through properly after the last session though so i use my needle as a ramrod quite a lot in cleaning um, as long as you don't plow the end of it into something, it's not something that I see as an issue, but obviously do be careful of that fragile tip. And I also use the reverse of it because, particularly if you've been an idiot enough, like me here, having something this shape isn't unhelpful. Final and absolute winner of my uh, couldn't live without tools in terms of cleaning is Tamiya's cotton buds. They are indestructible. They're smaller than normal ones and they won't shed. That's the biggest thing. Uh, these things are absolutely amazing and I tend to use them, you know, every single time I do a serious clean.
after a load of completely unnecessary stuff that shouldn't have happened. Let's see if we can just get a nice base coat down on this. I'm using a primer. Uh, you wouldn't have to use a primer at this stage because you know the model's already been primed and painted, so you could just use a normal black if you wished, but I quite like the tone of uh, dark neutral gray from Monument, so I'm gonna be using that. Well, <laughs> I guess I'll be cleaning this fully now. Uh, you know, shouldn't half ass things, should you? So, uh, yeah, that's, that's not what we were hoping for. Obviously, still got some blockages in there. Let's give this thing an entire proper clean and uh, do things properly. I should have just cleaned my brush better last time. Um, it's made me think that perhaps a uh, how to clean an, a clogged airbrush video would be useful. Look at all this. So I'm gonna clean myself up and then we're actually gonna get on with painting this model. <sighs> Looking more healthy, sounding more healthy. There we go. Need a mug with don't paint like Byron on it. <laughs> right. It's almost like this is the condition your airbrush is meant to be in. All right, there we go, we are good. Still getting a couple of bubbles. Uh, bubbles tend to mean that you have problems somewhere here in the body, in the midsection. A lot of problems with airbrushes will be from the nozzle, you know, the beginning of the nozzle and outwards, um, or at least in somewhere in here, but bubbles can mean anything is going where on, you know, any around there. But we're good. So now I'm just gonna uh, swap out for uh, a white. I'll just dump it in with this, that's fine. And we can put down a little bit of pre-shading. Not strictly necessary, I don't think, but uh, I still don't quite know what I'm gonna do yet. And it might be something we need for some aspects. So if not, we can just cover it over in any sections where it lands. Test color number one is gonna be Fire Dragon Bright. I'm gonna put this down all over and then I'll tint it darker and more purple in some sections. And I haven't planned out how yet, but we will make it more peach <laughs> in some other sections. So uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. preparing a little bit of a glaze. I've got some Cassandora yellow here. And I'm gonna put a bit of Screamer Pink in it. They're the two colors that are, uh, well, the Cassandora is not on the mini, but Screamer Pink is currently. Screamer Pink's a really nice color. It's got quite a lot of warmth and depth to it. Cassandora is a fairly strong shade. So I'm probably gonna be diluting this quite a lot. Still not entirely sure where I want the interplay to kind of land between, uh, you know, whether orange is the main color or the purples is just for recesses or stuff like that. But we've got some colors down now, which hasn't been unsuccessful. They're not perfect at all by any means, but uh, we do have an idea how they're gonna look on the model. Bit of medium in there to soften it. A bit of water too, so let's see how this looks. That is quite orange. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit to it and pop it all over and we'll see how it looks on that skin. Maybe I want to do a, I'll, I'll test it on the other leg actually. I'm gonna make up another version of this wash with more of the purple in it. I'm gonna try putting that on the recesses initially. Here we go. So let's try it, especially on the darker sections, which already have this purple in. And I could even, transition between two washes. And then we just get a, uh, a very lazy but extremely efficient wet blend. 
Still not sure if this is all as bright as I would like it, but um, as we do have other layers to go down, and maybe I need to start from, you know, a, a pretty bold flat orange or something like that. That's some very sloppy washing here. It is a test model though. I think we can tell the colors are not an awful idea, um, you know, <laughs> regardless of the quality of application there. This isn't a, you can just tell by looking at it, it's not a bad set of colors to be working with. It is pretty funky. Um, so I think my highlights will probably need to, they'll need to go towards pastel rather than towards, you know, super vibrant, crazy colors. And they should be reserved a bit for the deeper sections in the recesses where they are a bit darker. I don't, I've used a luminous orange, but I don't want this, you know, <laughs> I want it to stand out, but I don't want it to literally glow. Obviously, once I've got this ironed out, I can work out ways to make the process more efficient, but I'd much rather um, start with colors that I know that I'm confident with or are correct, and then, you know, work backwards from there. I'd like to start with the end result and then try and hack um, some efficiency into it, whether it's, you know, using more dry brushing, using the airbrush more, using washes more, whatever it is that I can, uh, I can get away with. This is looking like it is gonna work though. And I do have one real trick up my sleeve in terms of a, uh, a, a proper hack around with the skin and transitions and just making them look cool, but being able to get away with murder, which is putting some blotching and some proper, um, you know, like animal markings on them. Uh, that thigh is definitely far too bright, but that was always going to be a worry with doing something quite this extreme. This model isn't here to be perfect and it's more important that I try the right things. Um, even if I do do them the wrong way, then that I, you know, get a, uh, a perfect tabletop ready end result out of it. Time to see where a little bit of dry brushing can get us. So here is where we are so far. I've put down some slight highlights. This kind of ribby, chesty, breast, not breast section um, here is actually quite difficult to paint nicely. So I think that looks crap, but I'm not too concerned. <laughs> Tail looks great though with some highlights on thighs are beginning to look a little bit better. I do want to aim for a mid peach, I feel. What I want to do now is start bringing in some dry brushing. It's still a test model, we're still working things out, but um, I'm fairly sure that we need to put down some orange to kind of phase into these claws. I have just thought, however, before the dry brush, I think I want a fade on these. So I'm going to airbrush a fade from the edge of the claws to make them even darker, and then we'll dry brush over the entire thing. Try out some strong violet. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. Just making a mess of everything, aren't I? Hmm. Maybe a little black in or something would actually be. I want it to fade a little bit more than that, so let's try with some of Adam. World's weakest black. I wouldn't normally use a fancy brush for this, but I'm being pretty careful with how it is in the airbrush. Okay, a bit more suitable. Okay, I've got a little bit of extra detail there. Just dry this off properly and then we can dry brush. I think basically, maybe not at the very ends, so maybe not up to here, but around here in particular, that's been really useful actually. It's a useful way to fade from one color to the other and it will, um, like our how to hack flawless blends video, um, we're going for exactly that and we just want to push the other stuff to the background. I might actually want it a tiny, tiny bit brighter. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to introduce that small an amount of uh, the monument paint because it is so strong, but let's give it a go. It's like using a dot of really, really strong chili sauce and still being surprised by how spicy it is. All right. There is definitely something there. 
Um, it's going to be some pretty subtle dry brushing, but it's going to be a fantastic way to fade. That's uh, that's for sure. And then at the point at which I've covered the areas, it should be possible to go and get some of that slightly crazy bright colour, knock it back a little. and then work it in. This really is going to take some experimentation back and forth with what we need to use where, but I'm pretty sure that that, that claw section has been fairly successful. This model hasn't been stripped, and if it had been stripped, I think it would be a, it'd be showing a slightly more solid end result now, but it's not the end of the world. The other thing we could do is we could actually gloss varnish the claws. I'm going to now bring up the metals, make them nice and shiny, and that should give us a good idea of what's going on. I really don't know what I'm going to do with the hair. The obvious but uh, slightly scary colour would be a blue. It would bounce off all of these really nicely and give a load of contrast, but um, that might be a bit too nuts, potentially. Equally not sure what to do about these little horns. Uh, yeah, not sure whatsoever. So I think what I'm going to do is base coat them with a warm light brown and then highlight them straight into ivory just to give us some pop. I should probably put some Screamer Pink in that base coat. No reason why not. It's quite browny anyway, so it should be quite natural. This is the time that really mounts up on models like this. They look fairly simple, and they are, but just treating the different aspects in the manner that you should to get the best out of them is always quite tricky. So I believe it's magic purple wash time let's see what we can do for our metallics i really like metallic uh well it's not metallic purple it's silver with a purple wash over it but i think it's a really strong combination Put a little bit of the screamer pink in this one we are looking to keep this all pretty warm and it should soften the color a little bit so i actually realized that i think i wanted the claws painted uh, before we did that step, so I've just gone and done those. I also put a splash of turquoise down on the trim of the loincloth. I wasn't sure what colour I was going to do that piece. I'm not sure if turquoise is the right colour, but I was talking about introducing some um, some blues to the model, so it seemed like an all right place to give it a go. Right, let's see how this wash works. Ideally, it should be fairly soft, but should leave a pretty noticeable change. What I'll do is I'll just fuzz it out with a bit of heavily diluted stuff. Until here, it's looking okay. I can use the same on the claws that I do on the armor. I uh, could have had some flatter coverage around there, but apart from that, I'd say fairly successful. I'm actually going to run it over the edges of the armor because I have got some silver overspill sections and the wash pooling. So for example, under those ribs there, that should hide things quite nicely. I'm just going to water it right down and fade it out around the calves. So I think all of that has been fairly successful actually. Fairly, not, not perfectly, but you know, we're getting there. And I just don't know what to do with the hair. So I think I'm going to let some viewers inform that decision. I do not have a clue. So this is the bit when things get a little scary because what I want to try out is some mottling on the skin. Uh, there's not so many places to try out on a model this small. So I'm going to have to pick carefully, but I do want to give it a go. So I'm going to pick this thigh area and see if I can suggest that it is mottling, you know, from the, from the hip or groin area outwards. Um, there's nothing really to do at this step, apart from just rock on and see how it looks, so... I'm just using the same wash that I've got already on the model, and I'm going to try really hard to make organic shapes. These will leave tidal marks, I would imagine. If they don't, that's fine. If they do, that's to be expected. So... 
bigger and then fading out and also getting smaller is the intent. I'll do all the big ones first. It's important to try and keep the pattern looking random. You can't have it like it looks like systematic dots or something. So in order to do that, I'm going to move around a fair bit myself and not, you know, go left to right. If this uh, wash mix is successful, I will make up a full pot batch of it. And then, you know, at least I'll keep consistency of color. The other thing I could do is take the same mix, dilute it in my brush with some water and see if it's possible for me to do some lighter ones. That's enough. It's easy when you're having fun with this type of thing to go too far. So that test patch will be enough for me. Uh, I don't know where else I put it on the head or something, you know, maybe coming up the, coming up the jaw or something, <laughs> not a clue. Um, but anyway, I think that looks all right and it should look fairly striking. So we'll leave that to dry, see what it does while it's drying and hopefully it still looks all right then. Looking pretty good. The fade has been all right. I've then taken it around basically anywhere that's heading towards a naughty bit is getting darker. Um, so I will, um, the chest um, and boob area on this just really aren't very smooth sculpting and there's a lot of buildup. So I'll avoid it on this one, but that's something that I'll try in the future. And then the idea is to have some coming up from the neck as well uh, as the bum. So yeah, they're looking pretty good. I'm going to see now, uh, this wouldn't be for core troops, but it might be relevant for characters. I'm going to see if I've got the control to dot within my dots. And the idea would be to just make something with a bit more of a, an animal print vibe to it by doing that. So Let's see if that's possible. Mix up roughly my uh, my skin color from the underneath sections. Now this isn't a wash, so it will not behave the same. Let's see if we can go inside some of these big ones at least. That's actually on the ones of that size at least fairly forgiving. So that's great to know. Um, pretty efficient way to leopard print my lady. The blotching's worked out fairly well. I brought up some brighter areas on the face a little bit just to show what it would look like if it had been properly highlighted. And uh, that's about it. I thought though, what we would do, I mean, why not? What's the point of doing Slanesh if you can't have a little bit of drama there? I'm gonna see if I can make these eyes look a little bit more evil by surrounding them with a bit of fairly ridiculous makeup or shading or something like that. So I'm going to take this purple and pop it around the eyes, and then if we want, we can do something that is, you know, more makeup-y. One thing to be aware of is we're going to be... Any makeup is going to kind of counter that nice highlight that we've got underneath the eyes. Um, so if I'm going to do it, I'm going to have to do it pretty obviously. I've never done anything like this before, let's see how it goes. a little bit tribally. I don't think that's been completely unsuccessful. All right, that'll do. Uh, asymmetric, you know, it's the nesh, why not? Let's just have it on one area, I'll dot that eye. And then aside from the hair, which I'd like you guys to provide some feedback on, I think I'm gonna call that done for a test model. We're not done done, but we are done enough in my opinion there. So I think that's been pretty successful. Looks like it is a fairly solid and striking scheme. Uh, definitely some tweaking and these aren't even the colors that I will you know end up using at the end would love your feedback on the hair uh, could be black could be like a purpley black uh, a gray you know it's the nice you can get away with anything you like whatsoever just not sure what would go with it maybe having some dots of turquoise or a crystal blue or something throughout that or you know like a crystal blue but just brought back with a purple or something maybe that would be a cool way to get everything that I want involved in the army but at this point, we don't even know what the basing is going to be yet, and I don't want to pick something that's you know going to going to jar with that. Would really like your feedback on that, though. I think it's been a fairly solid uh, test model. I need to dramatically reduce the time these are going to take, but as I covered in um, you know in the painting process, I want to get something you know pretty much solid now, and I can look at this and be like, actually, I can remove you know steps three to five out of one to seven or whatever in order to speed this up. Notable takeaways from this: the armor. Base coat and wash is fine, you know, optional highlights there depending on whether it's a character or whether I feel that I want to afterwards. But uh, silver base coat and wash is absolutely solid on that armor. It's nice and simple anyway. It's not too fiddly and it's got a nice level of, you know, recessed detail. So 
that's good. That's really nice to know. Um, the claws definitely going to be one of the most difficult bits for me here. Um, just working out how to how to transition into them, how dark to take them, how purple to take them, you know, how deep to take them, that type of stuff, how much to dry brush on after them and that type of thing. Blotches, great, really good. You know, I've really enjoyed doing those and I could do those in, I just did them in one color that I'd mixed up, I'd used elsewhere. Um, I think you could probably get away with doing those blotches in a huge variety of colors because they're meant to look striking anyway. So you're not trying to make something gel with, you know, the thing that's going on top of it is meant to stand out and that's a lot more forgiving. Skin and face color and stuff like that, okay. Maybe I could take them up to be a bit more peach, but the thing that I need to do at this point now is do a larger test model because these little tiny spindly limbs that we've got here, you know, if they were, and this will be in the army, if they were to be this big, God knows how different they'd look, but it would be a lot. <laughs> it would definitely be a lot. So I'm gonna to have to do a larger test model. That is pretty solid though. I think that's good. Um, when we're working on the larger things, you'll be able to do a bit more with the airbrush or maybe even some stippling or something like that. Let us know what you think of this video. If you've got any thoughts about the army, whether that's how you would approach a test model or suggestions that you've got for the next steps or just what you'd like to see next. You know, Do you want to see me um, figuring out the hair color? Do you want to see me uh, blending a weapon or practicing something at a character level or, you know, bashing out 10 demonettes. Uh, let me know what you think would be the most useful and all this stuff has to go in my army. So, you know, it doesn't really matter which one I do when, as long as it's in an order that makes sense. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Please like, please comment, please subscribe, hit that bell notification if you haven't already. So you're notified for future content and I'll catch you in the next video. Some vampire accounts going to be landing this weekend. Uh, pretty excited about that. I really, really like that range and I'm pretty interested in it. I must say, I do already have an army. I think it's a, it's a pretty tempting prospect to add a few cool pieces to that. Anyway, have a great weekend. I'll catch you in a bit.